Psalms 107. We'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. We can stop right there. And that verse ought to indict us tonight. Verse 2 says, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, and that they might go to a city of habitation. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfieth the longing soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We enjoyed the good singing. We enjoyed the good testimonies. Lord, we just enjoy being in the house of God tonight. Now, Father, I pray for those that are working with the children on the other side that you would bless their efforts. I pray for those children, while their minds are impressionable, that the truth of the Word of God would become wonderful to them. I pray for those that have been saved, that they'd grow in the Lord. I pray for those that have not been saved, that the Word of God would prick their tender little hearts. And I pray that, Lord, when they reach the age of accountability, they'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Uh, Father, I pray for those that are working with our teens and our youth. God, you'd bless their efforts. We, Lord, can't imagine all the peer pressure that these teens are under in this day and age and the scrutiny they're under. So I pray that you'd undergird them with truth and you'd help them. And I pray, too, for those that have been saved, you'd bless them and grow them. Those that, Lord, have not been saved, they'd get saved before it's everlasting too late. Now, Father, help us from the Word of God tonight. Lord, uh, uh, lighten our minds and our paths, and God, may we truly uh, uh, lead forth from this place better stewards of the Word of God, but better Christians. Uh, we do pray, if there be any amongst us tonight unsaved, that Lord, uh, before the final amen of the service, they'd come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Uh, Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, 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 we'll all uh, uh, commit one to another. There's going to be a happy day one day when we'll stroll all over heaven with you and with one another uh, and enjoy the bounty and the blessings of God. Uh, now, Father, help us, Lord. If you don't help us, we won't get any help. And so, Father, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel and God help your people. We'll thank you for it, for it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to show you three things in the way of introduction. I want you to first of all notice the pleading of the psalmist. The psalmist says again in verse number one, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Uh, he is pleading with people to praise the Lord uh, and to give thanks unto the Lord. Uh, can I say uh, we're without excuse not to thank the Lord. Uh, we are breathing His air, walking on His footstool, uh, enjoying His blessings, uh, and uh, we ought to give thanks unto the Lord. Uh, if we got what we deserve tonight, we'd all be in hell. Uh, uh, if God uh, just uh, took His hand off of us, we'd be in a mess. Uh, I firmly believe if we truly thank the Lord for His goodness, uh, we'd have a revival in these days like we can't even comprehend. The psalmist is pleading, for folks to thank the Lord. We ought to thank Him. He's been good to all of us. We see the pleading. Notice the pining, if you will, in verse number 8. He says, All oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness and for His wonderful works to the children of men. It amazes me how we're quick to talk about things we care about, but we're slow to talk about the goodness of the Lord. Hmm? Now, there's nothing wrong with having an affection for things. If I wanted to know anything about the Boston Celtics, I'd ask Brother James. Brother James, tell me about Boston. What kind of team they got? What kind of team have they had? Uh, are they ever going to be the Larry Bird, Kevin McHale era again? And, and he could talk about the green and white and the checkerboard floor for hours, trust me. 
I rode to Louisville and back with him last week. He can talk for hours, huh? And that's all right. He's a Boston fan. If I want to know anything about golf, I could go ask Brother Josh, tell me who's on the tour, who can hit the ball, who can't hit the ball, what's the latest on Tiger's leg, uh, 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 what, what's it looking like for the Masters this year. I guess they've already played that. I don't even know. Uh, but I could talk to him about golf. He could tell me all kinds of things about golf because he loves golf. That's all right. Uh, if I wanted to know something about, uh, you know, bluegrass music, I'd say, Dr. Phil... Uh, who's your favorite pickers and singers and all that stuff? And he could tell me. And he'd tell me all about bluegrass music. And each and every one of you have something that is dear to you and that you can converse about, that you could spend time talking about. And every one of you, it's a grandpa or grandma or new grandma. I could say, how's little Ivy Dean? Oh, let me tell you. Huh? And that's wonderful. You're readily excited to talk about those things you care about. If you ask me about something with fiberglass and a 427 four-speed, I could go into a lot of detail. But when it comes to talking about the greatest topic that we could ever talk about, the Lord Jesus Christ, people are hesitant. you got to drag it out of them with a team of mules. And several times I asked if anybody wanted to brag on the Lord. Now if I would have said, does anybody want to give us a weather report? I dare say we might have had more interaction talking about the weather than talking about the King of Glory. We see the pleading of the psalmist. We see the pining of the psalmist. Notice the publishing of the psalmist. In verse 21 he said this, He sent his word, and, or, or, or verse 21, I'm sorry, All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men, and let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. He says we need to publish the things of the Lord. How's the world going to know how great Jesus is unless we tell them? Right. Now, Brother Donald, they expect the preacher to talk about Jesus. But you know what really impacts them? When the guy standing next to him on the job talks about the greatness of Jesus. When the guy standing to him there at DHL says, You know what, I used to be a drunk. I used to be a religion, wrapped up in religion, but now I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and I'm not a drunk, I'm drinking from a different well now. Hmm? That will impact them, because they're not expecting that. Hmm? We see that throughout this psalm, the psalmist is asking men to talk about the goodness of the Lord. And here's my little smart aleck message. I'm going to preach on why some people don't praise the Lord. Why some people don't praise the Lord. Or do not praise the Lord. Why? I mean, if we can talk about the Celtics, and we can talk about golf, and we can talk about bluegrass, and we can talk about grandbabies, and we can talk about Corvettes, and we can talk about anything else that comes to mind, including the weather. Why can't we talk about the Lord? Hmm? In a nutshell, a lot of people don't talk about the Lord because they're intimidated. Some people don't talk about the Lord in here when I get prayer requests because they say, well, I just don't want to take up too much time. Well, when are you going to take the time? Because if you won't praise Him in here, I guarantee you, you're not going to praise Him out there. Sure. So why? Do people not praise the Lord? Can I say, first of all, some people do not praise the Lord because they've never been brought out. 
Look at verse 14. The Bible says, He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bands in sunder. They've never been brought out of darkness and brought into the glorious light of the Lord. Therefore, they're not going to brag about the Lord. They're not going to praise the Lord because they've never been brought out. Can I tell you, in this uh, psalm alone, six times you find the word out. You find it 2,504 times in your King James Bible. Unless you've been brought out, you have nothing to shout about. Hmm? Huh? Would you show me somebody that was in the garbage dump of life? You show me somebody in the gutter of sin. Uh, you show me somebody that was bound by sin, uh, bound by the pressures of sin, the poisons of sin, the penalty of sin, uh, and Jesus come by and broke their chains. Uh, Jesus washed them in his blood, made new creatures out of them. Uh, I'll show you somebody uh, that will raise a hand and say, I just want to praise the Lord. Uh, uh, he didn't leave me where he found me. Uh, he saved me. He changed me. put my path a uh, feet on a path called straight uh, put praise unto God in my mouth uh, hey I'm heaven bound with the hammer down uh, hey I don't deserve to go to heaven but I'm going to heaven uh, cause Jesus brought me out uh, and I'm telling you some people won't praise the Lord cause they've never been brought out now listen we might as well since I'm in my smart aleck mood just, just get down to the brass tacks of it doesn't my daughter-in-law look pitiful all up here all by herself let me go sit down uh, hey Taya How's it going? Yeah, no problem. Uh, listen, you know, truth of the matter is, some people don't brag on the Lord because they don't know Him. They just don't know Him. How are they going to talk about something they don't know about? They've never, never been brought out. There's just some folks. Now. Hey, I don't know anything about x ray so I don't talk about x ray Now, you can tell me everything about x ray and I'd yawn and say, who cares? But anyway. <laughs> hmm. But we've got folks, they've never been brought out, Brother Ray. Now here's the thing. Now I can understand somebody's just recently gotten saved or somebody's just starting to grow in the Lord, doesn't really understand much about, uh, uh, you know, how things happen around here. You've got a bunch of people looking at them. They don't want to say the wrong thing. They don't want to say something out of turn. They, they're excited about being saved. But Brother Phil, i got a real problem, real problem, real problem. With somebody that says they've been saved 30 years and you've never heard them testify? Uh-oh, there's something wrong. Yeah, there is something wrong. Is there not? Huh? Somebody, I'm not talking about going to some church in the street. I'm talking about coming to this church. I'm talking about uh, uh, where we've watched God walk through this place and change lives. Uh, I'm talking about uh, you come around here long enough, sooner or later, something's going to well up on the inside of you if you know the Lord. Uh, I mean, every now and then, some uh, your hand's going to go up, uh, a tear's going to come down, a smile's going to come on your face. Uh, something's going to happen uh, in your life. Uh, but somebody says they've been saved, Brother Brian, for 15, 20, 30 years and you never hear them ever say, I want to thank the Lord for saving me. They don't praise the Lord because maybe they just haven't been brought out. Their name may be on the church books but it might not be on heaven's roll. Mm -mm. You cannot pass from death unto life and it not change your life. Mm -mm. Uh, 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 why do some people not praise the Lord, preacher? Well, some don't because they've never been brought out. Can I say this? Some don't because they don't have any clout. That's an old word for credit. Hmm? You know, sometimes you got to build up some credit. I knew a preacher one time. His name was Dr. Homer Smith. I heard him preach one time. And Dr. Homer Smith had had about six or seven heart attacks. He's about 90 at this time, Brother Clint. I mean, he's an old man. He had more fire at 90 than a lot of these guys of the day in their 20s. You know what I'm saying? And Dr. Smith was a preaching up a storm one time. And he had preached all over the country. And by the way, Dr. Smith didn't have, you know, all the wherewithals and all the, you know, T's crossed the way everybody says you ought to in the eyes. He just pastored a country church down there in Georgia that nobody really thought much of. I mean, low country church. And, and I'm talking back in the 80s would give a million dollars a year to missions. In the 80s. Little old country church, about 100 folks, they'd give a million dollars to missions. Say, so how'd they do that? They just believed in getting involved in the, in the work of God. But anyway, Dr. Smith go all over the country, and, and they'd ask him to preach, and he'd preach. Sometimes you just got to shout on credit. 
Sometimes, uh, you know, the bills aren't paid, things aren't going good, uh, everything's falling apart, but Jesus is still good. And sometimes even when it's not good in your life, uh, He's still good and it's worth shouting on, even if you got to shout on credit. He's telling this story. He said they pulled out of a meeting, him and Mrs. Smith, and they're heading down the road, and it was a gully washer of a rainstorm, lightning, thunder, everything, and he gets a flat tire. And he says on the side of the road, that was way before AAA come change your tires for you, you know. He's out there trying to work that old mechanical jack and get that thing up, and it's pouring down rain. He's getting soaked, and he's trying to get that tire off on the side of the road and everything. And he says his wonderful smart aleck wife rolls down the window and said, Hey, Dr. Smith, why don't you shout on that for a while? Uh, he's out there, and it's pouring down rain, and, and it's a mess, and he gets to thinking about the goodness of God, where God found him, uh, and he ought to be in hell. Uh, and all of a sudden, he said he threw the uh, tire iron one way, got to running around that car saying, Jesus is good hallelujah bless the lamb of god hey sometimes you just got to shout on credit some people don't praise the lord because they don't have any clout uh, they can't go back and see how good god's been to them he may everything might be falling apart right now but i, I want to tell you something he's been good to me and if he never blesses me again he's still worth my praise huh it's about good he's been to us, huh? Some don't praise the Lord because they don't have any clout. Something never been brought out. Can I say this? Some don't praise the Lord because they're in a bout. It's hard to throw up hands and praise the Lord when you're having to fight off the devil, when you're in a battle, when you're in a fight. Sometimes you're fighting for every grasp and reaching and grasping for every little inch you can get. And some people. They can't praise the Lord because they're in the thick of it. I don't know about you. I love that song about when there is no way and He makes a way. But sometimes you're waiting for Him to make the way. He hadn't made it yet. Red Sea hadn't been parted yet and you don't know which way is up. It's not always easy to shout then. It's not always easy to brag on the Lord then. Some don't praise because they're in a bout. Now, if you've been saved any length of time, you realize He is going to make a way. It'd be all right just go ahead and praise Him. Uh, but some don't because they're in a bout. Can I say this? Some don't praise the Lord because they're full of doubt. It's hard to brag on Jesus when you're doubting Jesus. Hmm. I've never seen anybody who was doubting their salvation who stood up and thanked God for their salvation. Hmm. I've never seen anybody stand up and, and praise the Lord for all of His greatness when you're doubting His greatness. Hmm. Listen, doubt is a tool of the devil. Why? Because the Bible says anything that is not of faith is sin. So if I'm not walking by faith, if I'm not living by faith, if I'm not trusting by faith and I'm doubting, then I am sinning against God. So the devil will try to get you to doubt. He'll get you to doubt the promises of God. He'll get you to doubt the will of God for your life. He'll get you to doubt whether or not you're in the right church and whether or not you're going the right way. And even he can, if he will, will get you to doubt your salvation. You say, preacher, I've never doubted my salvation. You ought to thank the Lord for that. There are some people who wrestle with that. And the Bible says if it were possible, even the very elect could forget they were purged from their old sins. You see, you can get so anemic spiritually, you can doubt the things of God. And when you're doubting, you're not shouting. Mm -mm. There's nothing worse for a Christian to be in a state of turmoil because you're full of doubt. So how do I get over that doubt? You get in the Word of God and let God put some promise in your soul. Uh, you doubt your salvation, you get in there and let Him give you a verse to give you assurance of your salvation. Uh, then next time you get those feelings of doubt, just go back to that verse. It never changes. Mm. By the way, we're saved by the Word of God. Right. Mm. We're washed by the Word of God. And it's by the Word of God we come to that repentance. And, and can I say something? That's why it's important to have a verse. Uh, a lot of these, these, these younger crowd coming up today, they base everything on a feeling, on emotion. 
Better be careful. Your feelings and emotions change. I was hungry when church was over this morning. I wouldn't put on a feed bag and that feeling changed. I had another feeling come over me. It's called nap. Uh, I felt bad. My darling wife's there with her mama and her sister and her family, Mother's Day and everything. I looked at her and said, baby, it's time to go. Or I'm crawling up in your sister's couch and having a nap here. I mean, it was time, huh? I said, what are you trying to say? Your feelings will change. Your emotions will change. It's amazing things that used to motivate me 30 years ago. I really don't care anymore because it's just too tired to deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Huh? It just don't matter anymore. Huh? Amazing me, these young guys all worried about losing their hair. When you get old, you don't care, man. That's just one less thing I got to do in the morning. You know? It's, it's crazy. Huh? This is just some things don't matter when you get old. Huh? No matter. But see, in the spiritual realm, if you base everything emotionally, you're going to be in trouble. Because your emotions change from moment to moment. But the Word of God abideth forever. And everything that I have and I am and I base my spirituality on, if it's based on the promises of the Word of God, they never change. A lot of these young preachers say, well, I feel like I need that God wants me to go into this ministry. Well, first of all, you've already answered your question. You're not spiritual if you feel. Because God will give you a verse on which direction He wants you to go. So there's some, they just doubt everything because everything is based on what is going on in their life, not based upon what thus saith the Lord. It's hard to praise the Lord when you're doubting. Can I say this? Mm, there's some people that don't praise the Lord because they just rather pout. Hmm. You ever known that crowd? It's sunshiny. Boy, it's a beautiful day. Yeah, but it's going to get hot. <laughs> Boy, what a lovely day. But it's going to rain tomorrow. I mean, they're always negative. Always negative. Huh? Look at him and say, boy, you look nice today, but I didn't yesterday. I mean, you know, there's just some people, they're always negative. They always see the glass half empty instead of half full. Uh, they're just always finding fault. Uh, boy, didn't Brother Jim look nice today? Well, that's your opinion. <laughs> you know, there are just some people, they're always negative. Boy, God's been blessing the church. We're going to build a new building. Yeah, and then that means more traffic. You know, it, it's just, it's, it just blows my mind that people are always that negative. Never find that happy place in their life. There are just some people who'd rather pout, be miserable. If you're miserable, do me a favor. Talk to Brother Clint. Leave me alone, you know. I just... Uh, Life's too short to be miserable. There's enough misery in this world. Uh, uh, happy day in my life last year when I turned off the news. I got tired of all the misery and all the junk being pumped into our, our lives from the news media. Hmm? What a blessing I can wake up every day and I don't have to worry about ever looking at the picture of Andy Brashear. What a blessing. But there are some people that are just always thriving on pouting. No matter what, they can never have a good day. What it really speaks to is that deep down inside, they're not satisfied in the goodness of God. Listen. There's a whole lot in this world that deals with our psyche. And I'm working on a message dealing with the attacks on our minds. I've spent a lot of time this week working on this message, but there's a lot of things, a lot of issues that people deal with, but one of them is, is a lack of self-worth. To be honest with you, I've been saved 47 years, and I've been trying to figure out for 47 years why God would leave heaven, go to the cross, die for us, and would be willing to save us. I don't understand it, but I'm sure glad He did. None of us deserve the shed blood of Calvary. 
But it's okay to rejoice in the fact that that blood's been applied to your life and you've been saved. It's okay. It's okay to enjoy being saved. It's okay to enjoy the goodness of God. But there are some people that are masochists. They think that they've got to make themselves miserable all the time. That's sad. You know what the Bible says? The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. You know why some are never happy? They don't have any joy. How do you get joy? Well, somebody had a good acronym for it. Put Jesus first, others second, yourself last. Those that are miserable usually got themselves first. And that's a problem. Huh? Some won't praise the Lord because all they want to do is pout. Hmm? Hey, Satan's got a big old thumb you can suck on if you want. But it ain't going to help you. But you know what will help you? There's a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. You know what will help you? The Lord inhabits the praise of His people. The more we praise the Lord, the more He shows up, the more He blesses, the more He'll encourage you and help you. I thought about this. Brother Brian, why do some people never praise the Lord? Because they're louts. L-O-U-T. That's a big fancy word for being a bum. There are a bunch of spiritual bums in this world. God good enough to save you. God good enough to bless you. God good enough to hear your prayers. God good enough to give you a Bible, put you in a good church. And you don't have enough uh, appreciation to praise Him. You're a bum. Hmm? God help us. Hmm? No man lives unto himself and no man dies unto himself. There are people who are watching you. You're going to give an account of your life to God. But listen, you ought not be a spiritual bum. We've got a bunch of folks that all they want to do is be like baby birds in a nest and sit there and say, Lord, bless me. Lord, give me this. Lord, do this for me. Lord, do this for me. And don't expect anything in return. He bankrupt heaven to buy your sin, sin debt. And all he asks for you to do is live for him. Hmm? I don't want to be a spiritual bum. I don't like spiritual bums. I don't like natural bums. Unless you've got a physical handicap, there's no reason why you can't work in this world. Everywhere is hiring in America. Everywhere. Hmm? I heard on the radio the other day, a guy was saying a good friend of his uh, uh, owned a uh, local pizzeria. He can't even open up the dining room because he can't get anybody to come and serve. He says they're making too much money being bums on welfare and on uh, government assistance and putting on a pair of shoes and putting on a smile and taking somebody's order and bringing them a pizza. Hmm? I remember back in our day, we'd have loved to have been able to get a job getting, you know, serving pizza. I remember working all day for $3.60 bailing hay. I'd have much rather thrown some pizza at somebody. Throwing hay up in a barn all day, killing myself. You say, what are you trying to say, preacher? We got a bunch of bums. We got people that want all the benefits and blessings and cost them nothing. Yeah. Same thing happens at church. People expect the preacher to have a message. They expect people to sing and bless them. They expect people to uh, uh, pay their tithes so the light bill pay, stays on. And uh, expect folks to clean the church. They expect folks uh, uh, to make certain everything's in order so they can come in, sit down, do nothing, and get up and leave. Hmm? The very least we ought to be able to do and throw a hand toward heaven and say, I just want to bless the Lord. He's been good to me. Why do some people not praise the Lord? I told you this is a smart aleck message. Some people don't want to praise the Lord because they're loaded with tout. T-A-U-T, that's a fancy word for stress. But we live in a stressed out society, don't we? If you live toward the eastern side of town and have to take 275 East, God bless you. Two times this week, I had to take Brother Sammy that way and back. On Friday, it took me two hours to drive from Florence to Cold Spring and back. Two hours. Uh, I was not praising the Lord for two hours in traffic. My stress level was boom. Uh, it's a good thing I'm on blood pressure medicine. That I may or may not have doubled up that day. You know what I'm saying? Hmm? Say, what are you trying to say, preacher? 
when you're stressed out, it's hard to praise the Lord. And there's a lot in this world that will stress you out. The Bible calls it distress. And it's, a, it's the enemy of the soul. Why do you think Jesus told his disciple, come you into a desert place and rest for a little while? Your body needs rest. Your mind needs rest. And we live in a society that never sleeps. We live in a, in a day and age. What in the world did we ever do with, when we had four TV, TV channels and they, they went off at one in the morning? Now you got 500 channels, 24 hours a day, and you can't even find nothing to watch. We're just stressed out all the time. Hey, even at 3 in the morning, you can find the infomercial. Huh? Stress, 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 stress. It's sure hard to brag on Jesus when you're stressed out about everything. Stressed out about paying your bills. Stressed out about your children going to school, your grandchildren, what they're involved in. Stressed out about traffic. Stressed out about uh, uh, your co-workers and how they treat you. Stressed out, just stressed about everything. Let alone mashed potato brains in the White House. I mean, just stress. Seriously. If you had to look forward to America for the next 20 years and think, Phew, I don't know how we're going to make it out of this administration. I really don't. You do know America's on the verge of busting. As we sit here right now, the stock market's inflated 10,000 points. They start calling the numbers on that, look out. As we sit here right now, the average grocery store has enough groceries to fill their community for three days. I don't know if you heard this, but somebody hacked a pipeline that runs from Texas to New York. So watch the gas prices go up in the next few days. They had shut down the pipeline because somebody's hacking the computer system that's flowing all that oil through the U.S. Hmm? All kinds of things going on in this country. It, this rubber band of America is stretched as far as it could, and it's about to pop. When you got the media telling everybody certain lives matters and certain ones don't, and you got ca uh, ca uh, culture saying you need to be canceled because you don't think the way I think, and you got people saying this is a, a, a normal, uh, uh, men can go in women's bathrooms with little girls and all kinds of things, this thing's about ready to break. Amen. Everywhere I go, normal thinking Americans wonder what in the world's happened to our country. We've been seized. And it's about ready to break. I'm telling you, folks are stressed out, and it's real hard to worship and praise the Lord when your mind's on everything but Jesus. A lot of folks, Brother Bob, they're so stressed out when they get to church, they sit down, and that's the first time they've relaxed all week long. And they just sit down and almost collapse. And they don't praise the Lord because their minds have been just shattered by everything going on around them. Some people just don't praise the Lord because their mind hasn't been on Him. thought about this lastly. Why do some people just not praise the Lord? Because they have spiritual gout. Hmm? They're hurting. Never forget when I turned 40. Gosh. Now, Brother Jack, you're the oldest guy in here, so I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> that was almost 18 years ago. Gosh, I'm getting old. I turned 40. Donald's over there trying to add all that up. Somebody help him. And I woke up one morning, and I had a sheet. Sheets don't weigh anything. On my big toe, and I thought when I rolled the sheet back, my big toe was going to be laying on the mattress by itself. I thought, what in the world? So I go to the doctor. That's the benefit of having a wife who's a nurse. She gets me to the doctor. I go in, and he says, you've got gout. I said, that's for old people. <laughs> now listen, I've had two back surgeries, neck surgery, 
I've had two cancer surgeries. I've had shoulder surgery. All of that is a Band-Aid compared to gout. Gout. John Wayne cried over gout. <laughs> I have learned. By the way, he gave me a shot. Gave me these little bitty pills. I mean, you, if you blinked, you missed them. Little bitty things. Took them pills, gout goes away. What I have found over the ensuing years is that I can feel when gout is coming on. And we had this conversation in North Carolina. What a blessing to know that it's because not of the acid, the lack of acid that, you know, Fort Scump can straighten you out. You need to talk to this guy. But if I feel like the gout is coming on, if I take them pills, it doesn't break out into the full-fledged feel like my toes falling off deal. But if you let that thing get on, you just got to endure till the end. There's nothing worse than that. There's been times I wake up with gout, and it's all I do is get my foot in my shoe. And, and I've walked in, Brother Randy said, what's going on? Gout, you know. And you hobble around, and you got to deal with it. It's painful. It's not life-threatening. It's life-altering, because it's painful. But you're not going to die of it. It's nothing they're going to have to operate and remove anything. It's just something you've got to endure. Some people don't praise the Lord when they come to the house of God because they're in pain. Listen, I could beat my chest and say, Oh, God's so good, you ought to be able to praise Him over anything. But when you've got to bury a child, that's painful. When you lose your job and you don't know how you're going to pay your bills, that's painful. Oh, is the Lord still worthy to be praised? Sure He is. But many times when we're in those kind of situations, our mind isn't on praising the Lord. Our mind's on our problems. You see, when you're in pain, it's real hard to divorce that kind of pain. And when that gout flares up on me, I can all day long say, oh, it don't hurt, it don't hurt, it don't hurt. Guess what? It hurts. There's no quick fix for it. And friends... Don't be quick to judge because somebody doesn't praise the Lord. You don't know what they're going through, friend. You don't know the heartache that they might have had even on their way to church. The bottom line is this. The psalmist says, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for His goodness. You see, when we come and assemble in this environment... It sure is good when folks start praising the Lord. I was kind of hoping it would kind of start out that way and continue on that way, and I wouldn't have to preach on this little smart aleck message. Because I'm looking at this thing saying, Lord, they're going to stone me on this deal. But the truth of the matter is, sometimes we don't praise the Lord like we should, but we ought to all come looking to see what God's going to do and come listening to see what people are going to praise the Lord for. You ought to always become, become willing to praise the Lord if it is your heart to stand up and say something. But don't judge people who don't praise the Lord. But take every, every opportunity you got to praise Him. First of all, why don't you just start telling Him how wonderful He is? Why don't you start thanking him for how good he is? And then in a public setting, why don't you start telling others how wonderful he is? And then maybe in a church setting, he'll light in on you and let you to stand up and say how wonderful he is. But don't let people intimidate you from doing what should be the most natural thing that there is to do and that's just let everybody know how much you love Jesus.
Sometimes you might even have to praise him on credit. But he does inhabit the praise of his people. You'll never brag on Jesus that he doesn't take note. And friend, when he takes note, he'll show up and help you, even at those times when you don't feel like praising. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.